Welcome to today's web chat about breastfeeding. Thank you for joining us. My name is Ali Novara, and I have the privilege of working with the Von Voigtlander Women's Health Program. And I'll be your host for today's chat. Breastfeeding is one of the most natural and intimate human interactions. But just because it's natural doesn't mean it's easy. Whether you're a first time mom or a mom of four, it's normal to have questions about breastfeeding. And there are always new tips and tricks we moms can share with one another. Our goal today is to provide helpful information for mothers and their support networks about breastfeeding, including challenges, best practices, and how to navigate transitions like returning to work. We know there is no shortage of advice from well-intentioned friends and family, not to mention the internet. So we're also ready to do some myth-busting today and help you sort out the truth. We'll introduce our panelists in a moment. But first, a few housekeeping items. You can submit questions at any time, even now, for our panelists to answer during the Q&A portion of today's chat. Questions can be submitted by commenting on this video, but please note that your name or profile name will be visible to others participating. If you prefer a more anonymous option, you can send a private message to us via Facebook or email at ask mishmed at med.umich.edu. If you can't stay for the whole chat or want to share the recording with a friend, a video of the chat in its entirety will be available on our Facebook page later today and posted to the Michigan Medicine YouTube channel soon after. I'd like to introduce you to our panelists now. Carrie Pulowski has been a pediatric nurse for 27 years, as well as a lactation consultant for the past 13 years at Michigan Medicine. She works with patients in Mott Children's Hospital, as well as in our outpatient clinics. She has personally breastfed and pumped for three children. Megan Trenary worked in the neonatal ICU as a nurse for five years and has been working as a lactation consultant for three years. She works with patients in Mott Children's Hospital, as well as the outpatient clinics. She has personally breastfed and pumped for two children. Thank you again for joining us. Let's jump right in. What is one of the most discussed topics you cover with breastfeeding mothers? Well, I'm gonna answer this. My name is Megan. Um, Carrie and I wanna help you reach your breastfeeding goals. We look forward to answering your questions and no matter what stage of breastfeeding they pertain to. Maybe you were expecting, maybe you were rec recently delivered, perhaps you're about to go back to work or are just curious. There's a lot we could cover today, but I want to take a few moments, minutes to discuss some of the fundamental aspects of breastfeeding that impact your very first hours and days after delivery. As lactation consultants who work both in the hospital with families in unique or extraordinary circumstances, as well as in the clinic setting with many families who went home with their baby a day or two after delivery, we have seen a good range of complications that could easily be avoided with a little prenatal education. Most of the difficulties that we encounter have to do with not having enough breast milk to fully support the baby's needs as well as the problems that likely led to the inadequate milk supply. While some people do have risk factors that they cannot control, which can lead to a low milk supply, most of the time, the problem could have been avoided with a combination of upfront knowledge as well as lactation support. The reason why it is so important to be proactive and learn about breastfeeding before you have the baby is because how much milk you make is greatly dependent on what happens immediately after birth as well as the following couple of days and weeks after. As long as there is no medical reason to provide formula, a bottle, or a pacifier, then we highly recommend following a very basic plan in order to both feed your baby enough as well as to establish a good milk supply. The most basic key to breastfeeding is to allow your baby to breastfeed as soon after delivery as possible and as often as they want after. In order to accomplish this, you need to be mentally prepared and well-educated about what this entails. Your baby has been living inside you and is very aware of their surroundings before they are born. Imagine the transition they must go through after delivery. They will find the most comfort in the sound of your heartbeat and voice. They will find this as well as warmth and nutrition while against your chest. Most newborn reflexes exist to help them breastfeed. 
They have been getting their nutrition constantly from the umbilical cord. Now they need to get it very frequently from your breast. The first milk that you make is very, very concentrated. If you were to compare it to formula, you would think you were not giving your baby enough food because at first it's just drops. But with frequent feedings, your baby will get all the nutrition they need while also rapidly stimulating your milk supply to grow and transition to meet the needs of your baby as they rapidly grow and mature. This is where many people rightfully get confused and concerned about whether they are doing the right thing for their baby. The next thing I'm about to say catches many people off guard. Your newborn needs to eat at a minimum of every three hours around the clock, oftentimes much more than that. At each of those feedings, they may continue for, the feedings may last for up to 40 minutes. If you are not aware of this, then you might not feed your baby enough, or you may think something is wrong if your baby is acting hungry this often. It is normal. It is natural. And if you respond to your baby's hunger cues and feed them on demand, you should be able to produce enough milk for your baby. This is because your body makes milk based on a supply and demand biofeedback loop. The more you nurse, the more milk you make. While this knowledge is fundamental in order to be mentally prepared to feed your baby by the breast, there are other factors which can sabotage your efforts. This is where you need to ask for help from a lactation support person as soon as possible after delivery if you are not certain things are going well. If your baby is having trouble latching to your breast, they may be nursing often but not removing enough milk. If they do not remove enough milk, your body won't get all the information that it needs to build your milk supply. The problems that we see in the clinic are frequently related to the baby not breastfeeding well for one reason or another and therefore not getting the milk that they need, and oftentimes this results in the mother not building an adequate milk supply. What is really tragic is when the problem could have easily been adjusted with a little help from a trained professional shortly after birth. While breastfeeding is natural, it does not always come easy to the mother and baby. If we could really drive home a couple of points, that would be breastfeed as soon after birth as possible and frequently thereafter. Make sure your baby has a deep latch, and if you don't know what that is, ask for help. If it hurts, something needs to change, and ask for help. And if you are worried something isn't going well, start using a breast pump and ask for help. Thank you for that overview, Megan. We'll open up the floor for questions now. I'd like to remind our audience that you can submit questions by commenting on this video directly by direct messaging us on Facebook or by emailing us at ask-mishmed at med.umich.edu. We will not use your name when we read off our question, but do know that if you comment directly on the video, your name or profile name will be visible to other participants. So let's get started. How do you know when rooting is due to baby be still being hungry versus just habit or soothing? You want me to answer? Sure. Okay. Well, <clears throat> a lot of times moms do think that the baby, um, after a baby goes to the breast and feeds and comes off and seems satisfied, if you burp the baby, sometimes they will start sticking their hands in their mouth and um, they um, not always want to feed. Sometimes they do want to just suck. So you can put the baby back to breast. If the baby falls asleep right away, you know the baby probably wasn't hungry. Um, you can try, if the baby's a little bit older, you can try a pacifier and see if that soothes the baby. Um, when in doubt, the best thing is just to put the baby back to breast and see if the baby falls asleep and then you'd put the baby down. Okay. Anything to add? I think that in the very beginning days, because mm -hmm. you don't really know and because the free feedings are so frequent um, and it's a comfort for your newborn that, like Carrie said, um, always offer the breast first. Um, and then you have to decide if they fall asleep right away how you want to, if you want to let the baby continue suckling at the breast or if you really need to go to sleep handing the baby off to somebody else, but always give them the opportunity to feed first. Great, thank you both. 
Okay, this question is, my baby is now three and a half weeks and starts to make noises and twist his head around towards what I think is the end of his feed. He de-latches himself. Sometimes I have to do it so he doesn't twist or bite down on my nipple. Is this normal? It is normal. <laughs> um, your baby is maturing rapidly and they become really a lot more aware of their surroundings and interested in everything that's going on around them. Um, this can be a challenge for a lot of moms because um, perhaps they know that the feed's not quite done yet and they want their baby to stay on the breast. Um, maybe the baby comes off the nipple a bit too harshly and it's uncomfortable. Um, so it becomes a little bit of an art form, um, learning your baby's personality and habits um, as they change from week to week and adapting to them. So um, that may require changing what you've been doing, such as going into a room with less distractions, or if you can tell that your baby may come off of the breast soon, um, trying to unlatch them first before they pull off of your nipple and potentially hurt you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. When is the best time for me to be pumping to store milk as I will eventually be going back to work full time and also to store for, for if I decide to go somewhere for more than two to three hours away from my baby so my husband can feed him? Okay. How often should I be pumping to store? Should I be taking prenatal vitamin? Oh, we'll wait on that one. Okay. Wait on that next question. <laughs> okay. So a lot of times we recommend moms start pumping. Um, if breastfeeding is going well, we don't recommend starting to pump until about three or four weeks after the baby's born, um, just because you want to get breastfeeding well established. But after that point, the best time to pump is after you feed the baby in the morning when you have the most milk. So um, typically a mom will breastfeed her baby first thing in the morning and then she'll just pump immediately after that. And then you can store that milk, you know, put it in the refrigerator. Or if you want to give the baby a bottle, you can give the baby the bottle in the evening of that breast milk and you pump, you know, pump at the time when the baby gets the bottle. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then if you want to pump, you know, some moms will pump several times a day during the day to store more milk. Um, for later when they go to work. So. Great, thank you. The next question, should I be taking prenatal vitamins while breastfeeding? That's generally the recommendation, yes. Um, in general, you know, all of the nutrition that is going into your breast milk is coming from you and your nutrition. Uh, it takes a lot from your body. It's actually 500 extra calories on average per person per day to make that breast milk for your baby. So um, that's not just calories, it's all of the nutrition that goes into the, um, as well. So um, taking your prenatal vitamin is advised to help both you heal after delivery um, and to nourish your milk. And um, I've also heard that in general, it's a good idea for any woman who may possibly get pregnant again in the future to be taking their prenatal vitamin um, well before they actually get pregnant, so continue taking it. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, we have another great question here. Um, is it normal for babies to be nursing to sleep exclusively at three to six weeks old? Uh, yes, babies can do that. Um, you know, you'll get, there's many different recommendations out there. Um, it is okay though if your baby does nurse to go to sleep. You're not going to spoil your baby at this age. Um, a lot of people will say put your baby down before it uh, falls asleep at the breast, but sometimes that's very hard to do. So if your baby falls asleep when you're nursing, just put it right down to sleep. That's okay mm -hmm. at, at this age. Yes. Great. Okay. How long should breastfeeding sessions take when a baby is seven weeks old? I was told at least 20 minutes in the NICU, but she has been out of the NICU for three weeks now and is gaining weight appropriately. If she stops eating before 20 minutes and seems satisfied, should we be as worried as we would be when they were in the NICU? They would tube feed the rest. So um, this particular person is tube feeding the rest of the feed when they were at home or when they were in the hospital when they were in the hospital yes 
So this is one of the more unique circumstances that we were talking about. Um, Carrie and I both work with the mothers who are in the NICU. So in this particular circumstance, it depends on what your baby's um, adjusted gestational age is. If your baby was born prematurely um, and then discharged um, from the NICU, um, say, before they were adjusted to 40 weeks, um, like a term baby, their baby may still have a slightly immature suck, like a more gentle suck, and may take a little longer to remove the breast milk. Um, in this case, um, they said seven weeks old approximately? Yes. Um, yeah. If it was a typical seven week old baby who was born at term, I would say, no, it does not need to take um, 20 to 40 minutes. Um, in general, it's going to be when your baby is satisfied. But if your baby is still a little extra sleepy, it's a little, a little extra premature, um, then you might want to make an outpatient lactation appointment to see how much milk your baby is transferring at the breast to make sure that it is efficient and they're not just sleepy and falling asleep before they really should have completed their feed. What do you think? Well, the other thing is too, when in doubt, if you're ever questioning if your baby's getting enough to feed mm -hmm. or anything, take your baby into your pediatrician for a weight check. Mm -hmm. That is the best way to know how a baby's feeding. Um, if they're gaining weight, we don't worry so much as the time they spend at the breast. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's great, thank you. When can I, when can I stop pumping after every breastfeeding session? I have a very large supply already built up and my baby is only seven weeks old. I am still pumping a large amount after every breastfeed, even though I only feed on one breast per session as instructed by the lactation consultant. How would I stop? Gradually, all at once? Um, gradually. Um, if you have been able to, whatever, whatever situation you're in that required you to pump after breastfeeding, if you have sort of resolved that situation and you now have a good milk supply and or your baby is transferring that milk well at the breast, you don't need to pump after every breastfeeding session. However, if you went cold turkey and just stopped pumping, um, then your breasts are likely going to be engorged afterwards and very uncomfortable, which could lead to problems such as plugged ducts or infection called mastitis. So we would recommend just pumping enough to relieve the um, uncomfortable fullness and um, slowly decreasing the number of times that you're pumping each day. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, thank you. What are some tips to keep baby awake or awake enough to keep eating, even if she is sleeping while breastfeeding? Okay. So if your baby falls asleep at the breast, um, you can take baby off, change their diaper, get them naked. Um, sometimes you can place them skin to skin for a few minutes and they'll wake up. Um, some people will use like a cool washcloth on their you know, chest or back or um, tickle their feet tickle their chin when they're feeding. Those are all things that can help. Sometimes also if a baby's on the breast and a mom's feeding, uh, moms can do what we call breast compression and just give your breast a squeeze as you're feeding the baby. And um, that way sometimes the babies will start sucking again. So those are all things. Another gr great question coming in. With my first child, it wasn't a lack of milk, but an overproduction. I am due any day with my second. Are there any suggestions to en avoid engorgement and or mastitis? Feed your baby frequently, <laughs> as much as possible. If you need to express a little, you can use your hands to do it, or the pump to just express a little bit so you don't, you're not uncomfortable. But um, you don't want to totally empty your breast because every time you empty your breast, you're gonna tell your body to make more. So if you're, just feed your baby as mm -hmm. much as possible. So, if you feed your baby as much as possible, that is perfect advice, um, but you find that you're getting an oversupply and you haven't been doing anything additional to stimulate that milk supply, like pumping, um, then once your milk supply has been established, which usually takes place in the first two weeks after delivery, um, at that point you can start to um, 
make your milk supply uh, a little bit smaller by doing different tricks like block feeding um, or just feeding one side at a time and then like Carrie said um, just trying to relieve the engorgement on the opposite side with a very small amount of uh, milk removal using hand expression or a hand pump or something that's very gentle so it doesn't stimulate further milk production um, but if this is a problem for you um, you should get some help because there's a lot of different tricks that um, can be done to to help reduce that milk supply. Great, thank you. Is baby at risk for aspiration from breastfeeding? Sometimes I fall asleep or he falls asleep while feeding and I notice he has a mouthful of milk. So babies have a gag reflex. That's why the pediatricians recommend safe sleep on their back. So even if they were to gag or to uh, choke on the milk that usually wakes them up. They swallow it, it goes down the back of their throat into their stomach. So um, I would not be concerned if your baby has a mouthful of milk and does fall asleep because they will, they will swallow it or it'll dribble out their mouth. So it's okay. Thank you. You just wanna make sure you don't fall asleep though holding your baby. So if you feel like you're falling asleep, you need to put your baby down on a flat surface on their back. Great point, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is it normal for baby to have a little more difficulty latching when the breast is engorged? I've noticed my little one takes an extra few seconds and attempts to latch when I am more engorged. Yes, so um, when you're engorged, your, your breast is very hard, um, or at least it's just not as easy for the baby's mouth to compress. And for them to latch properly, they really need to get deep past the nipple onto or past the areola in order to breastfeed well. And um, if the breast tissue is hard to compress with their, with their little mouth, um, it will be a little bit more difficult for them to nurse. So there are different tricks that you can use to try and soften that area, either with a little bit of pumping or hand expression before the feed or by literally compressing and massaging the area around the nipple before you try and latch your baby just to soften that area and so that the tissue is can be moved. Mm -hmm. Great. Will the medications I'm taking affect the quality of my breast milk? Medications won't really affect the quality of your breast milk. If you are concerned about the medications you're taking, you can call um, our lactation helpline, um, or there is a website called the Infant Risk Center, which does have a really good information on different medications. They also have a helpline phone number you can call. Um, so it's not so much about it affects the quality of your milk, it's just some medications are um, can pass a little bit more through the milk and you have to take more precautions when taking them. So. Will breastfeeding help me lose the baby weight? For many people, it, it could, yes. Um, as I think we mentioned earlier, it takes about 500 extra calories a day on average for a woman to make breast milk. Um, that would be like exercising um, on a rowing machine for an hour at the gym. Um, so that's just sitting in bed nursing your baby all day long. So um, for many women, yes, the weight does come off um, faster when you're breastfeeding due to that calorie usage. Okay, thank you. Where can I store my breast milk at work? Well, you probably wanna check with your manager, whoever your manager is, or um, if you're having difficulties, you can check with human resources. But um, many facilities now um, we'll have a refrigerator, an employee refrigerator or separate refrigerator for breast milk, depending on how many employees are breastfeeding. Um, it is okay to put in a lunch cooler, you know, in a lunch bag and put it in the refrigerator if you want. If you don't have access to a refrigerator, you can take a cooler to work or a lunch bag, insulated lunch bag, put a, um, you know, an ice block in there or a, a cool pack or something and just store it that way. So oh, great. But if you're being given dif difficulty at work, there are laws to support breastfeeding moms, so you need to know that, mm -hmm. okay. And I believe 
freshly pumped milk is safe in a insulated lunch bag with a ice pack for um, 24 hours. 24 hours. Okay. So that should yep. make it through your work day, hopefully. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I work from home several days a week and find the days I'm in the office pumping, I'm painfully engorged by the end of the day. I pump on the same feeding schedule as home. Do I need to pump more or longer at work? So um, if you're painfully engorged, and this is different from other days when you are not at home um, or when you're just with your baby, then yes, there is something going on that you're not removing as much milk during the day as when you are with your baby or um, working at home. Um, and that is often um, because the pump does not remove quite as much milk as your baby would. Um, your baby uses a different kind of um, suck to remove the milk than a pump does. They use both compression and suction, um, and the pump just uses suction. The other factor is that you get a hormonal letdown uh, when you breast when you're breastfeed, um, and that hormone is um, much more. Um, it comes out a lot easier when you are with your actual baby than with the pump because it's um, a feel-good hormone. So some people find that they they have a difficult time getting that letdown response with a pump, and simply just do not remove quite as much milk. Thank you. Will insurance cover me being able to see a lactation consultant? Yes, most insurances pretty much all of them now do cover um, a certain amount of lactation consultant um, visits. You just have to contact your insurance and see how many you um, qualify for. So yes, they do cover them now, which is wonderful. Does that depend on um, where that lactation consultant works? Um, so a lot of, yes. So some private uh, lactation consultants um, will be covered under insurance. Um, you just have to check with them before you go visit. Um, but most hospital lactation consultants or clinics affiliated with a, a medical center are covered by insurance, so yes. Great, that's very helpful. Is it normal for my breasts to be leaking? Yes. Um, so particularly in the early weeks, um, and this is going to be different for everybody, uh, the hormone response that I was talking about, that letdown response um, can cause your breasts to leak when you are not feeding the baby. Um, that can be either because they are very full and they are just basically allowing some of that milk to leak off so that you don't become overfull. Um, and it could also just be because you are anticipating feeding your baby or because you hear your baby um, or another baby. And it just depends on how sensitive um, your, your breasts and brain are um, to that, that hormone. Well, I just want to add to, mm -hmm. um, some women never leak and they're very lucky, but um, <laughs> some women leak a lot and some women don't. So just know that either way is very normal. Thank you. Is it okay to continue breastfeeding my first child if I'm pregnant with my second child? Yes, um, as long as there is no um, concern by your OBGYN that it could potentially impact your current pregnancy. Um, for example, if you are, have a high risk pregnancy, um, then there's always that chance that they would prefer that you didn't. However, with a normal healthy pregnancy, you should be able to continue to nurse your um, other child. Just know that your pregnancy hormones are going to cause your milk supply to reduce and oftentimes reduce drastically. So you should not count on having the same amount of milk while breastfeeding and pregnant. And also um, make sure you always feed your baby first before you feed your um, other child, your toddler. Oh, after yes. delivery. Yes, yeah. after yeah. delivery, you wanna make sure. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm talking about after, but yes. Oh, no, that's okay, <laughs> that's okay. Okay. These are wonderful questions. Here we go with another one. If I am stressed out, will the stress hormones affect the quality of my milk? Can I pass my stress on to my child? Uh, you know, I, it's kind of controversial whether it'll stress, uh, change the um, con or composition of your milk, but 
yes, your baby will sense if you're stressed. Sometimes babies uh, won't latch or will have difficulty latching because they sense their mom is anxious or stressed. Um, the best way to relieve that stress, though, is just go into a quiet room and place your baby skin to skin on you, just in their diaper, right on your bare chest. And that usually will resolve um, your stress and that will help them to latch better and um, calm them too. Mm -hmm. So um, breastfeeding actually is a very good way to relieve stress So, um, because it releases the hormone oxytocin, which is your love hormone, which is um, prevents stress. So it's a great way if you're feeling stressed, just get that baby on your skin to skin and, and breastfeed it. So that's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there any truth to the saying, safe to drive, safe to feed, when it comes to drinking alcohol and breastfeeding? So I want to say yes. The rule that we have generally followed um, up until recently, because there's constantly changing um, data out there from research, has been that if you are sober, legally safe to drive, um, then the alcohol in your breast milk would be gone at that point. Um, so this is going to be different for every mom um, in terms of how much alcohol they can drink and um, metabolize before they are fully sober and whether or not this can happen um, from feed to feed so that you're safe to give that milk to your baby. However, research is constantly evolving and coming out and I believe there has been a new study out there that questions that. Um, do you have any tips for women who are exclusively pumping? Uh, uh, there are some Facebook pages, I guess, for moms who are mm -hmm. exclusively pumping. So if you can uh, connect with other moms, because it can be very stressful to exclusively pump. Um, if you have a really good milk supply, sometimes you don't have to pump as often. Um, you know, just uh, I would connect with other moms mm -hmm. too, because that's the biggest thing is getting that support from other moms. Um, and you can always call our warm line if you need some different mm -hmm. tips and stuff like that on it, I would say. There's a whole movement right now of women who are actually preferring to exclusively pump. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that it, it, you know, that can really be a decision, it's a personal decision that women make for a whole variety of circumstances. Perhaps it helps relieve anxiety to know exactly how much milk they have and are giving to their baby. Um, some of them are know that they're going to be returning to work at a certain point. Maybe they're working full time. Maybe they're traveling. Um, it, it just really depends. It's a personal decision. Um, some people are able to exclusively pump for a full year if that is their goal. Um, I do know that some people find it difficult to maintain a um, pumping schedule at work at times in order to successfully do that. Um, around the clock every day of the week. Um, and so that's where the support groups, which are plentiful on Instagram, Facebook, um, you name it, um, that, so that you can get some extra tips for how to sustain your milk supply, whether that be diet, um, tricks for relaxation, um, tricks for pumping um, more often while in your office or at work. It just depends on what your circumstances. My baby was born a preemie. Now that we are home, we are now breastfeeding and giving fortified breast milk with a bottle. I have noticed that he spits up a lot after nursing. Is he getting too much? If so, how do I know when he is satisfied if he continu continues to nurse? Well, you want to look at his weight gain. So that would be something you'd check with a pediatrician. And depending on his gestational age when he was born and how he looks on the growth curve now, um, you would need to discuss that with your individual um, primary care provider for your baby, whether it's a pediatrician, family medicine, med peds, um, to decide whether he really needs that fortification or not, because it may be he's getting more volume at breast than you know, um, so he may be spitting up for that reason. Um, you can also come in to one of our outpatient lactation um, clinics to get, um, and we will check and see how he's feeding at the breast, or you can see a community lactation consultant, whichever, okay. so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just started pumping and find it uncomfortable. 
Do you have any suggestions for making pumping easier? Pumping is actually something that requires um, a little bit of finesse and um, knowing that um, how, how your pump works and if it fits properly. If you just started pumping and it's uncomfortable, the very first thing you should look at is if it's fitting you properly. Um, I find that many women aren't aware that the flange, the piece that actually goes against your breast, um, is not one size fits all at all. Um, women have a wide range of different shaped and, shaped and sized nipples and um, your nipple shape and size is going to factor into proper fit and that is something that you will have to buy a separate part for um, and um, it might be a little bit of trial and error and it may actually change how, depending on how long you are pumping for between um, during the pumping session or even between pumping sessions. Um, so look online um, at the maker of your breast pump because it's going to depend on um, each one's going to fit your pump differently. Like if you, you can't you can't go between different companies um, to get compatible parts necessarily, um, and then order those parts, or you might be able to find it at a local store. And then you're going to have to pump and make sure that it's fitting properly. Um, you can also use um, a lubricant while pumping, um, such as lanolin or a nipple cream or nipple butter um, that is safe for your baby to ingest because it will likely come in contact with the milk. Um, and then you need to make sure that the settings on your pump are appropriate for you because it is fundamental that you are comfortable while you're pumping in order to get enough milk out. So if the suction setting is too high, then you need to turn it down a little bit. Um, there's not going to be um, a setting that can be prescribed for you. It's based on your comfort level, assuming that your nipples are not rubbing against the plastic on the inside of that flange. That's the pump part I'm suggesting you make sure fits properly. Um, so you're going to play with the settings, make sure that the speed is right for you, make sure the suction is right for you, and if you're still not comfortable, ask for help. But in general, if you are noticing that you are getting any raw, red, cracked, bleeding, blistered spots on your breasts or nipples, something needs to change, and um, that's not going to get any better until that something has been figured out and changed. Great, thank you. These are fantastic questions. Please keep them coming. I just gave birth several days ago and my breasts are uncomfortably large and full. Will my breasts stay this way? No, they'll, they'll get better. <laughs> but usually your milk comes in between day three and to day five. Um, and your engorgement will be bad until about uh, day six and then it actually starts to get better. Um, just feed your baby frequently. You can use warm compresses on your breasts before you feed. You can use cold compresses on your breast after you feed. You can take ibuprofen. Um, if you're uncomfortable, you can pump a little bit off or you can um, hand express a little bit of milk. Um, but the best thing is to feed your baby and just know that your breasts are not going to stay this way forever. Remember too that it's not just milk in there, it's blood, um, blood vessels and lymph tissue that are swollen, so it will get better. If it doesn't get better though for some reason, you do need to um, I would contact your OBGYN. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, the sleeping baby. Do I really need to wake my baby to feed? So this, again, depends on your baby's weight gain and um, any other circumstances about around your baby's health and what your pediatrician recommends. In general, until your baby has surpassed their birth weight, the recommendation is that yes, you do need to wake your baby at a minimum of every three hours around the clock in order to breastfeed. Once your baby has passed that birth weight and has been given permission from your pediatrician, usually, um, they're allowed to sleep a little longer if that is what they're naturally doing on their own. Um, but in, get permission. First. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's okay. Definitely. I have heard that if I eat certain foods while breastfeeding, my baby may get an upset stomach. Is it true? So we don't actually recommend 
limiting any any um, foods from your diet. Um, you may find, though, if you eat a lot of beans and it makes you gassy, your baby may be gassy. So sometimes you can limit that, or spicy foods. But um, the great thing about your breast milk is everything you eat um, goes right into your breast milk, and so your breast milk tastes different every time. So your baby develops a very good palate because they're um, exposed to different foods. So it's kind of neat in that way. So um, you know, you don't really need to limit anything in your diet unless you're noticing um, you're becoming gassy, and then you can, you know, your baby may be a little gassy. So you can hear yes. people recommend sometimes that. Um, just depend on who you talk to in your community. They might say, oh, you may have a da dairy um, allergy or your baby has a da dairy intolerance. Mm -hmm. That is actually pretty uncommon to truly have. And before trying to go into a, a major exclusion diet, like cutting out all dairy and all forms of dairy from your diet, have your pediatrician um, evaluate your baby first. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, if there's something that serious going on, um, it's going to be showing in other ways in your baby besides just being a little fussy or gassy. And all babies, their digestive systems are immature when they're first born, mm -hmm. so they're going to be gassy, and some babies spit up more than other babies. So, you know, when in doubt, always check with your pediatrician. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, great. I have been having a really challenging time breastfeeding. How do I know if it's just time to call it quits? So this is a hugely personal decision, right? Um, it really depends on what you've been going through, and there's so many different things different women go through. The important thing is for you to check in with yourself and kind of make that decision yourself, not based on what other people are telling you or pressuring you to do. If you know that your heart was just set on it, um, no matter what and that this is going to be something that you mourn the loss of, try and take a step back and evaluate it um, from different angles. For example, if you're having trouble breastfeeding at the breast, directly from the breast, but you are producing milk when you pump, is it worth it to you to continue pumping and providing that for your baby? And if so, is how much of a loss is that? Is it worth it to you? Is it, for example, still allowing you to cut back on your formula bill while also providing antibodies for your baby with that expressed breast milk. Um, but it, it, there's so many scenarios here, but you need to look at the whole picture. Um, decide if, you know, if it has to be a um, black or white scenario. Maybe you can give a little bit of breast milk to your baby that's pumped. Maybe you can breastfeed a little bit and then bottle feed them the rest of the time. Um, but before you just stop altogether, take a step back and, and just try and assess, you know, what, what has been really difficult, um, can, it, can it be a little of both, but you, if you decide, you know, no, really, this is, this is really stressing me out and it's not worth it to me, then that's your decision and it's fine. You're doing the best thing you can for your baby. Thank you. Where can I pump at work? Well, now there's uh, laws that employers have to provide a room for moms to pump, which is not a bathroom. So usually you contact either your human resources, your whoever your manager is, or you can talk to other moms that are pumping at work. Um, you should have a spot where you can pump, you can lock the door. Um, sometimes you may not have access to a sink right in that room, but. Um, I would check with your human resources, or if you're in a smaller company that maybe doesn't have a human resource um, department, I would check with your manager and just say, you know, no, there are laws out there now, and you can tell them you need, they need to provide you with a place to pump, which is not a bathroom, you guys. You, you should not be sitting near a toilet to mm -hmm. pump, okay? Mm -hmm. Good. If you ever do have difficulties with that, do you can also call us, and uh, we can talk you through it, give you some tips, okay? I'd like to add that, that while that all is all legally true for companies that have enough employees for that to be enforceable, mm -hmm. um, in real life there are plenty of women who really 
can't think of um, a place that they feel comfortable pumping in. Right. Perhaps the best your company can do, say, if you work at a restaurant, is to pump in your manager's office mm -hmm. in between um, waiting tables. If right. that's the case um, and your desire is to pump, it's going to become um, a process of creativity, um, finding where you are most comfortable. Maybe um, pumping in your car is where you feel most safe and mm -hmm. you can get an adapter for your pump that goes in the outlet of your car. Um, maybe you can get some covers, maybe you can get some little blinders for your window like you would put up for your baby. Um, pumping and working and breastfeeding um, sometimes requires a little creativity, but um, things have been done. People get have accomplished many incredible things in order to maintain their milk supply. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are vitamin D drops important if I'm still taking a prenatal vitamin with vitamin D? Uh, you know, so that is, so there are some um, studies out there that have shown that if moms take a certain amount of vitamin D, it actually passes into the breast milk. Um, but I would check with your pediatrician because I know there are different practices out there that um, say that it's okay for moms to test take a certain amount and um, they don't recommend the baby take vitamin D um, but that would be something I would discuss with your baby's doctor um, vitamin D though is recommended for babies who are breastfeeding especially in the northern hemisphere here so mm -hmm. my first baby was extremely sleepy the first couple of weeks and we had a hard time keeping her awake to nurse I ended up pumping for her, and then she preferred the bottle, so I became an exclusive pumper. I'm pregnant again. How can I be successful nursing this time if the baby is sleepy again? So that's hard. Um, first of all, it's a different baby, a different person, so it may not necessarily um, happen the same way. Um, and the the issue of bottle preference that it sounds like you experienced is, is very real. Um, babies can develop and it, sometimes it's referred to as nipple confusion um, but it has a lot more to do with just sort of the the easy access to a fast flowing bottle um, with a very easy nipple to latch onto um, depending on your baby's personality at what point you had to start bottle feeding etc um, that can be the case for some women however um, try and look at this next um, baby with fresh eyes. Um, it may be a completely different situation. Mm -hmm. You're already very experienced um, in how to try and keep that baby awake. Um, sounds like in pumping. And so really you're going into this with a wealth of information. Um, so you may find that it's a lot easier should you run into the same situation um, just because you have that upfront knowledge. Um, but um, don't assume that it's going to happen again. It may be completely different. Every breastfeeding situation is different from, you know, each baby is so different and um, sometimes you will have more milk with one baby, less milk with one baby. Some babies will latch, some babies won't latch, but um, yeah, just remember this is a very different baby, so mm -hmm. um, it may be a totally different experience. Mm -hmm. But again, do ask for help after the baby's born. So. Um, you can get off to a good start. So. We have a biting question. My baby who is nine months now is starting to have teeth. I don't want to stop breastfeeding, but he is biting me a lot and it can be very painful. Do you have any tricks or solutions for him to stop biting when I am breastfeeding? So a nine month old has a whole new personality. We're talking about, you know, they have a really funny personality a lot of the times and they have teeth and they are teething. A lot of times when they are biting down it can be for several reasons but one is that it feels good on their jaw um, or on their on their teeth you know gum line where they have teeth trying to erupt just like when we give them a teether um, and then they might um, think it's funny to get a reaction from you. So now you're dealing with breastfeeding and doing a little bit of not so much discipline but teaching them um, that it's not okay it's not with yelling it's not with screaming it's not with hitting or pinching it is usually just by saying nope you're done 
and mm -hmm. um, that's it. Um, if you want your milk, you can't bite me, and you just stop. Mm -hmm. It's really hard, but you have to try not to overreact mm -hmm. while they're doing it because they are, they think it's funny. It's not mm -hmm. because they're mean. It's just because <laughs> they are learning reactions and human mm -hmm. emotion and facial expressions. Um, and, but they do have to learn that it's not okay. Um, if you yell or scream or react because it hurts, um, there is a chance that your baby will become very scared and this can lead to nursing strikes where they refuse to breastfeed, which can be very distressing for everybody. But just be aware that that's a possibility. So do your best to curl your toes and hold your breath and just take them off the breast and you know, discipline them like with a facial expression. Um, but, and that can oftentimes be um, really effective. Um, if you make sure that you're consistent with it, it hopefully won't continue for too long. What is nipple confusion, and is it just a myth? So I'll let you answer that one. So yeah, we kind of just touched on the nipple <laughs> confusion um, versus nip, nipple okay. preference. It's not a myth. And the reason why it's not a myth is because um, we deal with it a lot in the clinic where the mom's upset because the baby doesn't want to nurse. Um, they want to bottle feed, and, the, and people are like, I don't understand, why wouldn't a baby who has all of these instincts to breastfeed as they come out, not breastfeed. And usually it's just because they're very smart. And mm -hmm. if um, simply, if depending on when you offered a bottle, um, they got that milk immediately in order for your milk to come out of your breasts freely. Not only do you have to be past those initial few days where you're making the small but very concentrated amounts of colostrum, but you have to be into a stage where your breasts um, have more mature milk and you have to have a good letdown response for the milk to come out um, and more freely. So your baby has to suck and make um, an effort to get that letdown to happen and sometimes that can take a few minutes. So they learn that the bottle doesn't require any upfront effort to get the milk out. Also, if there is um, any kind of um, difficulty with latching, your baby's going to recognize the difference in the ease of latching um, from your breast to a bottle nipple. It's the, they just learn quickly. It doesn't mean that a bottle is better or worse. It just means that it was, in their very immature understanding of the world, it was a little bit easier. Right. So, Megan correct in what you're saying and a lot of times we will um, instead of nipple confusion we'll actually call it uh, uh, flow preference because the babies prefer the fast flow because it's easier when the milk um, is not quite uh, flowing as fast so um, in the first few days it can be very difficult but a lot of times babies can overcome it once mom's milk mm -hmm. comes in so and if you are having difficulty with that again you know, do ask for help because mm -hmm. that is really important. So. Thank you. We are approaching the end of our web chat, so we're going to do one more question and then a quick wrap up. But um, the last question is Do I need to start pumping for a while before I go to work to get used to it? And how do I do that at home when I'm currently nursing my baby? Okay, so, again, I, I think at the beginning we um, touched on. Um, when to start um, pumping, giving your baby a bottle. And it's usually about three to four weeks after um, breastfeeding is well established. Once you feel like um, the baby is breastfeeding well, you're not having any difficulties, you can actually start even a little bit sooner. But we usually say you, um, you know, pump after breastfeeding in the morning. You can store that milk um, and then have dad or somebody give a bottle in the evening and you pump at that time and then you can start storing milk. Um, and then some moms will pump like several times during the day after feedings to store milk. And just be aware that sometimes you won't get a real uh, large amount. You may get 15 mLs, you might get two ounces. Any of those amounts are okay as long as your baby's growing. So um, I would just say, you know, about as long as breastfeeding's going well, just start doing it at three or four weeks. And if you have to pump sooner than that because your baby um, is not latching, that's fine too, just um, do it several times a day and start storing that milk. So. 
The reason why we suggest right. after the first morning feed is because your milk supply is the largest in the morning. Um, the hormone that helps with that supply is um, the highest during the early morning restful sleep hours. Um, so that's when your milk is going to be most plentiful so that you may likely have extra left over after nursing. In the evening, it starts to decrease a little bit um, in volume, and so you may not get as much out if you're trying to pump after nursing. Correct. Good point, because uh, that's important to know, because a lot of times moms will pump in the evening and they won't get much milk, mm -hmm. and then they'll be very stressed. But yeah. Well, thank you. So. Um, we are closing in on the end of our web chat today. So Megan um, Trenary and Carrie Pulowski, thank you very much for sharing your time and expertise with us. Michigan Medicine provides a broad range of breastfeeding services, including our inpatient breastfeeding services for mothers at Von Voigtlander Women's Hospital, as well as for moms of children being cared for at CS Mott Children's Hospital. Our outpatient breastfeeding clinic provides support and resources for moms and babies in a clinic setting, featuring our certified lactation consultants, as well as physicians who specialize in breastfeeding support. Our breastfeeding clinic is now offered at four locations, including the Canton Health Center and our three Ann Arbor locations, East Ann Arbor Health Center, West Ann Arbor Health Center, and Von Voigtlander Women's Clinic. We also have a wealth of online resources available for breastfeeding moms on our website, you can check out those resources as well as learn more about our outpatient breastfeeding clinics at www.umwomenshealth.org slash breastfeeding. Thank you to our audience for spending part of your afternoon with us. We hope today's chat has been helpful. We have a brief survey we pre prepared to help us learn how we can make chats like today's more helpful to you and to help us identify more topics you'd like to hear about. If you registered in advance, you'll receive an email with the link, or you can check the comments to this video, and we'll have a link there for you to follow. Once again, thank you for joining us, and have a wonderful afternoon.